One common question that many ask is what lens should I buy? Of course, it is important to know which lens is good or which is not. However, there is one thing even more important. One thing that will change completely the way you think about photography. Have you ever considered of how some of the greatest photographers have managed to express themselves through the focal length they were using? For example, Joel Meyerowitz has famously shot with lenses between 28 and 35 millimeters because he enjoyed being in the action and amongst people. And then of course we have these channels favorites, Joel Leiter and Ernst Haas, that they have both shot with focal lengths at 85 millimeters and even longer because they enjoyed keeping their distance and creating more abstract compositions. So this makes me think, isn't the lens a representation of the photographer's personality? I think that it is important before choosing a lens and starting asking questions like oh, which lens should I buy, expecting a very specific answer, to first understand yourself. So let me tell you a story that might give you a path on how to approach this. The story starts with you hitting the like button and with young Aris at the age of 22 starting his journey with street photography. When I started buying gear, of course, I was clueless. I had no idea what I was doing. So I bought an entry-level DSLR and Icon T3200 with the kit lens. And excited as I was, the only thing I cared about was taking image. However, as expected, Quickly, I was influenced by the amazing photos I would see people posting in their social media and actually flicker at the time. So I found myself asking, how do they do that? How do they take these amazing images? And with the naivete of my youth, I came to the conclusion that it must be their lens, it must be their gear. So I did a little bit of research about focal length and different lenses, and with a tiny budget I had at the time, I bought a Sigma 7200 f5.6 to f6.7, something like that, I don't even remember now. But to be honest, my life changed. I could now take photos of people on the streets by keeping my distance, I wouldn't have to engage much, and then all the buildings would look so big and impressive. But to be honest with you guys, my photos didn't improve much. And of course, with the experience I had at the time, I said, oh, it must have been the lens and the camera. This led me to sell every piece of gear I owned up until this point and then buy a full-frame camera, the Sony 72, with the kit lens. The quality of my images improved a little bit, but not significantly. I still wasn't able to get the beautiful bokeh balls that I would see being very popular in the Instagram universe between 2015 and 2016. That led me to go back into my computer and do research intensively. I learned all about apertures and how different apertures can make a photo look very sharp or very dreamy. And guess what? I bought a new lens. My first Nifty 50, the Sony 50mm 1.8. A great lens. A lens of unparalleled sharpness, at least compared to my kit lens. And of course, an aperture of f1.8. Now I could get the bokeballs that I so much desired. So I spent a very long time trying to ask you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell, but I also spent an entire year just shooting with a 50mm focal length. And I liked this because this focal length was very close to how I could see actually the world. So I drew a very nice comfort zone around me. I could take the images of people I wanted without having to go too close to them, but still stay relatively close to the action. However, then two things happened. The first thing is that I got bored, and the second thing is that I got introduced to the amazing 85mm photographs. I'm talking about the beautiful abstract compositions that you see people like Joshua K. Jackson and Craig Six Street Under on Instagram uh, creating. And then from them I got introduced to Sol Leiter and the amazing work he created. And uh, of course, <laughs> I have talked a lot about Solighter in this channel, almost in every single video. Uh, yeah, I'm a very big fan of his, what can I do? So I think by now you have figured out my pattern. So guess what I did next? I bought a lens. <laughs> yeah, I got the Sony 5mm 1.8 and I was immediately amazed by it. Now I could get photos of people on the streets and actually keep my distance from them. I could add drama to my shots and make everything look big and impressive due to the compression. A year after I was using the 85mm lens is when I actually realized how different focal lengths work and what different focal lengths can achieve. So I experimented a lot with 85mm. I would sometimes go closer to people and sometimes I would stay further away from them. 
Sometimes I would take portraits of people on the streets and sometimes I would use the 85mm lens as a wide-angle lens. And I actually think I found something really cool there. I figured out that I'm a big picture guy. I care more about the totality of an image rather than the little details in it. And that's why I think the 85mm lens resonated a lot with my style of shooting. I continued shooting with uh, the 85mm lens for a while longer, but something happened there. That's when I actually got bored of the 85mm. Yeah, surprise, surprise. And I wanted something more. I wanted to add more layers in my images. I wanted to add more complexity, more people, more action. And guess what I did? I bought a lens. I got my first 35mm lens. That's the lens I found the hardest of them all. Now, I had too many things in my frames that I didn't know what to do with. As I said before, I am a big picture guy, so I don't want to have too many details in my frames because they distract me and they confuse me. Now I had so many. So to be honest with you guys, to this date, I still struggle with the 35 millimeters, but that's fine because it might not be for me, at least not now. But I wanted to continue experimenting, so I wanted an ultra wide lens. And that's when I got the Tamron 17-28 f2.8. An ultra wide lens for street photography, he must be crazy you might think. And yes, I was, and I still am. But <laughs> the thing is, I found it easier to shoot with an ultra wide lens rather than the 35mm lens. And I know that there are plenty of great photographers of the past like Gary Winogrand and Bruce Gilder that were shooting with wider lens than 35mm, like the 28mm focal length. So the thing is, I enjoyed the ultra wide focal length because I would take the same approach as the 85mm lens because I would keep my distance from my subjects so then I would make the big things in the frame look small and then the small even smaller which means that now I could again focus in the big picture and make the little details that they were distracting me basically disappear and I could still go very close to my subjects and get nice and dramatic shots with a cinematic feel and some distortion and I like putting things in my photos like distortion because I feel like they are augmenting reality and they are showing us things that we cannot really see with the naked eye. But I had one more lesson to learn, not every 35 or 50 or 85mm lens is the same. Different lenses have different characters, some super sharp and some softer. Some render colors a certain way and some in a different one. That's when I shifted my attention to Fujifilm and I got the Fuji X-T3 with the Fuji 35mm f1.4. Because this 35mm lens of the cropped sensor gave me a focal length of approximately 50mm and it had a look soft and dreamy and yet it retained sharpness. And then I got the Fuji 50mm f2 on the Fuji X-T3 which gave me an effective focal length of about 75mm and I had a very similar experience with it. I absolutely love this lens, it's something about their character that it is so me. And I had a very similar experience with the Ricoh GR3X as well, again with an effective focal length of 50mm but in a very small body that you can take around with you on the streets and be very discreet. So through this experience with the different focal lengths, I think I learned a lot about myself and I actually find this fascinating. I learned that I'm a big picture guy, I learned that I don't care much about details and that I found them a bit confusing and distracting. I also learned that I like experimenting and I can adapt in different situations. But my journey with different lenses is far from over, right? I am open for new things, I'm open to learn more things about photography and of course about myself. So if they come, let them come. But I want to go back now and try to answer my initial question. Which lens should you buy? I think the answer is simple and it's all of them. But wait a bit, do not just buy to buy. I would suggest buying one lens first, one prime lens with one focal length and then use this lens for a long time. Once you feel that you have learned everything that you can learn from this lens, from this focal length, then move to the next one and then keep shooting with it for a long time as well. Through this process you will realize what works for you and what not. If you are finding yourself that you are always too far away from the action then you have to crop in to get the frame you wanted then maybe you need a longer focal length for example. If you feel like you are too close to the action all the time and then you need to take a few steps back, maybe you need a wider focal length. And this is exactly what I've done with my experience and now I know that I like living my life between the focal lengths of 50 and 85mm. But again, I'm open 
for change. I might change in the future. I might try something else. Something else might work for me in the future, right? Plus, there is not one lens that does every job. In some projects, I shoot with the 50s, in some others with the 85, and in some with the ultra wide, and in some of them with a combination of different lenses. And this is exactly what I have done in my Fog project that you can find posted in my website. Please write down in the comments which one is your favorite focal length for street photography and for photography in general and why, because this will help everyone to understand a bit more about why to use a certain focal length and open our minds into new ideas. Now, if you want to learn an easy way to compose your shots and instantly get better photos, regardless of the focal length, click and watch this video next. That was all for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I will see you on the streets. Bye-bye.